We're back here at Birmingham View Television with our political analyst to talk more about the things that happened in Birmingham. In particular today, we're going to talk about race in Birmingham. That's a touchy subject, I know. But sometimes it has to be talked about, and it can be talked about by our political consultants who know how to handle it very delicately, but also talk about some issues that I think will be helpful to us today. So we, we have an audience with us, the faithful few of Juan Lingavan and Major Click to talk about uh, race here in Birmingham. In particular, guys, you know how that played out in the recent election in terms of the over the mountain support for Patrick Cooper versus the inner city support for William Bell and, and this this distrust that just seems to be so prevalent here in, in society. How do we ever get over that here in Birmingham? Well I think it starts with an honest discussion. I think that's what we've been lacking in this community. Yeah. I think for so long it's been the taboo subject because everyone knows about Birmingham's uh, horrible racial history so no one would touch the issue with a temper pole on either side. And now when you go out and you start talking about it that there seems to be a, a lot of uh, a complex of almost guilt on white yeah, society's yeah. part, and, yeah. and, and a lot of black people seem angry and still bitter about the evils of the 1960s. Yeah, and before. <laughs> and before. <laughs> yeah. And, and both sides seems to want to, uh, to just live in the past as opposed to looking to the future and coming together and building common ground that's not racial, but people working collectively for a better tomorrow. Yeah, but I mean, I, I, I guess you just wonder how do you kind of, you, you move past it. Do you move past it by talking about it, or do you move past it by ignoring it? I think you have to discuss it. I think you have to have open discussions like this where everyone can say what, what they feel, they can talk about it, because it's an emotional issue. It's charged, it's heated, people are passionate about it. So get it out in the open. It, it, it's like suppressing feelings. This is uh -huh. Psychology 101. When okay, Psychology, Dr. Dr. <laughs> Dr. Dr. <laughs> Yeah, your opinion here. When people suppress feelings, it's not healthy. So everyone needs to have an open discussion, and the community needs to have a real dialogue on this time. And they need to have a real dialogue, not this superficial dialogue we've had for so long. Like, and we do great things in this community, like the Birmingham Pledge. We talk about that, which is a, a wonderful document. We encourage kids to sign it. We all sign it. But are we really living that and discussing it? Those yeah, are the things yeah. that we need to be discussing. Yeah, I think sometimes with the Over the Mountain uh, group, it, it, it seems like um, that, that there's this lack of trust. But you know, when Jay Grinning, when he spoke about. Um, when he talked about uh, 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 us coming together and fixing Birmingham, does that seem like that's somebody who's really reaching out, or does it seem like who's somebody who's kind of looking down or patronizing? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily call it patronizing. I agree with Major in part, and then I don't agree with Major in part, because race has always been an issue in Birmingham. Yeah. It's always been on the table. It, it's a constant. Uh, there may be some who want to pretend that the issue is dead, but for the most part, we recognize it in our daily our daily lives, mm -hmm. especially when you're in the minority. Yeah. Um, so, you know, going for a job, uh, working in various types of uh, professions, uh, things of that nature, even down to the sporting events and activities that come here in Birmingham. So I think race is a constant here in Birmingham. Um, I think it's one situation, even just looking at the mayor's race, if you look at the number, the, uh, yeah. the boxes, yeah, you know, yeah. the boxes in the areas such as Crestview and the areas that uh, typically lend more toward the white populace of Birmingham, most of those boxes voted uh, Over, nine out of ten overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly yeah, yeah. for uh, Patrick Cooper. Almost 9.5. Versus, <laughs> versus the boxes that lend toward the far eastern area and the far western area of town, mm. of course, and of course the northern area. Also, those boxes, you know, went for William, but went for William Bell. Mm. And I heard a lot of people saying, well, you know, the white boxes, they stuck together. Yeah, you know, why yeah. can't the black boxes stick together? Yeah. You know, we should learn to stick together. But for me, it's a thing of making sure that we get the best leader yeah. in, in city government, yeah. whether it be black or white. But I think racism is always an issue, uh, uh, and it depends on your social economic status. Yeah, yeah. I think you hit the nail on the head. The interesting thing to me was how Patrick Cooper started losing white votes near the end. There seemed to be a, a shift of maybe 20 or 25 percent of the white vote moved to William Bell because of the, the negative tone of Cooper's campaign. Yeah, because at the end of the day, nobody wants to hear negativism all the time. The, these malicious allegations about domestic violence that were never substantiated yeah. certainly helped William Bell in the end. Mm -hmm. Well, it helped, but the other factor that played the, the, the biggest role out that I've heard from a lot of folk, folks and voters out, out in the area was when they saw Patrick Cooper on, t on TV mm -hmm. at the debate. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who's um, nervous hands yeah, all over the place. a lot of folks' minds, mm -hmm. uh, but again, I went and looked at the boxes. Mm -hmm. If there was a box that had about uh, 1,900 votes, William Bell may have gotten about 50 or 60, maybe 90 votes. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I'm not sure if the 25% shift was, if there was a 25% shift or not. But again, I think as it relates to this particular race, it was more of demeanor and character mm -hmm. and um, 
things of that nature that played one of the biggest parts. You and, know, and experience. You know, one of the things I, I know that I, I feel that, we, that that we have gotten past it to a certain extent is the election of Patricia Todd herself, who was a, a white female, and, she uh, and, she, and she's and she's and she's gay, and she's in a predominantly black area. And so I know that there's hope. People aren't necessarily looking at race; they're looking at somebody who's going to come right. out and present represent their interests. Absolutely. And so, but the, but the problem is that traditionally and historically, over the mountain interests have never ever t really been synonymous with the same things that happen in the inner city interests. And so there's always this kind of distrust, like if these people are willing to put that much money into your campaign, are you really going to be looking out for our interests or are you going to be looking out for the people over there? And again, it, it goes back to class. Mm -hmm. that's, that's more, that's more socioeconomic, socioeconomic, yeah. socioeconomic uh, class issue. Because one of the things I say all the time is what affects the city of Birmingham mm -hmm. eventually has a trickle down effect that will Absolutely. affect all of these outlying areas. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks that may live over the mountain, they may live Yeah, there, but they're affected by they happiness. Yeah. And their right. impact uh -huh. is in the city yeah. of Birmingham. Uh -huh. so. So we're back to the issue of regional cooperation, which this area has lacked. You've got yeah, but nobody, you know, it's, it's sad, it's sad. It, it, it is. I mean, you have this divided government, you have the, the black Democrats and the white Republicans, yeah. and, meet, and they have these monthly meetings that... Uh, to to, 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 to gridlock. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they agree, they disagree. That's all they can do. Uh, and, 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 and I'm just looking at, even just as of late, uh, just a few weeks ago, Maxine Parker held the meeting dealing with Caraway and Yeah, yeah. And one of the things that the delegation here spoke about was Governor... Um, Riley and what he did not do for Jefferson County, uh -huh. and for the most part, the major cities throughout the state, he did something for. There was a major project or yeah. something, but there was nothing here. But I, and so I flipped it and I said, well, you know, we're we're complaining about the fact he didn't do anything here, but we are one of the cities where we don't have the regional cooperation. Yeah, exactly. nobody gets along. Yeah, the delegation doesn't get along. We don't come together. We can't stop bickering. We can't determine if it's in my backyard or your backyard, and that in itself causes Birmingham to lose major events. It, it does, but but but, that's, but it's still but those divisions are still mostly between black and white, right? Is it, and is it because you have older people who are still living in those times? Is it, maybe, is it time for fresher blood where maybe people our age or younger don't necessarily have those kind of animosities and who don't necessarily think in that way? I think it's certainly generational. The younger generation is more open to people of different like Patricia Todd. You're right; mm -hmm. they're open to race, sexual orientation, gender. That's not an issue, and we're seeing that with Jefferson County. We're going to see four of the five commissioners. Yeah. Yeah, are, are going to be new. new yeah. bases. And so yeah. that's going to be positive for Jefferson County because and when you look at this commission, I think everyone would agree: black, white, rich, poor, gay, or straight. This has been a disaster. It's been a yeah. disaster. <laughs> it's her yes. and Joe Reed, who is the oldest. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The, the old uh, ski on of a, a black a democratic black, politics. Yeah. yeah. Him and him, when she was elected, how there was the division in the Democratic Party between Reed and. Uh -huh. And Todd, and yeah. it was really interesting how that shook out. But so. but that was also along racial lines too, to a certain extent, wasn't it? It was, and that's what's really interesting because it it should have never been that way. Mm -hmm. Because exactly what Wanda said, that I think people saw in Patricia a leader they trusted, someone who they thought cared about them because she was the, she the was underdog. Not really, other than her sexual or right. orientation, she was not. She's non-controversial. Mm -hmm. She's committed to the community and the people that she serves. She's a gentle giant, and she falls to a level of humility that is lacking in government, whether it be local, state, or federal. Absolutely. I would agree. Well, we talked, you, you mentioned earlier, and I, I do, Major, you know, I always agree with you, but this time I do take <laughs> some exception about, we, we don't talk about race here in Birmingham. I think it, oh, sometimes it goes on ad nauseum to a certain extent because it's, a, it, because of the guilt, because of the history, we want to discuss it sometimes. But I think, though, that some of those discussions are not fruitful because we're not really being honest about our emotions. At the emotions. same time, we're not you, saying, the, you know, you, you've got this balancing act that you're trying to get. You know, how do you correct the, the, the imbalances of the past but not create more discrimination on in the present, you know, and I think that's a that's a fear that's going on there. And some that's a very precarious position to be in, and that's where you are. And, and, and like the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute does study circles where they bring together groups of different backgrounds and different persuasions, and these people talk about these things. They that they are open and honest about that. And you're mm -hmm. right. I think there is a notion in some segments of the white community that now this has become a majority black city that we're being shut out. Of yeah, we're being shut out. Oh no, we're going to be you know no, we're going like to be discriminated against. Yeah, yeah. So now we're back to square one. Discrimination is discrimination in any form. We all yeah. know that. And but so, it's something that big. I wanted to just go back to something you just said when you mentioned about. You know uh, that it's, it's racism is still it still exists in yeah. the pains of the past. Yeah, and that's that's one of the things you, we have to focus on the pains of the past and what we keep within. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it starts the healing has to start with us. You know, we're sitting here today. Majors here. You, you and I are two African American women. He's a white Caucasian male. Major doesn't know my pain. Mm -hmm. He has not, and probably will never experience the level of. Uh, discrimination yeah. that we experience on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. We have several things going for us. We're black women. Mm -hmm. uh, 
we're female, yeah, period, we're, yeah, female. and we're darker complected women. And mm -hmm. we both know within our own races, there's, yeah. a, there's yeah. a stereotype. A picking order, yeah, picking order, based on your skin, skin color. color. Yeah, and so hair. And hair, uh -huh. so it makes a huge difference. So, you know, it's one of those things, will it ever go away? Absolutely not, mm -hmm. you know, but can we deal with it? Can we make the adjustments? Yeah.